Hi there, mathematicians. Let's get started with section 2.6, the final section of unit 2, proving geometric relationships. Our essential question, how can you use a flowchart to prove a mathematical statement? So mathematicians will be able to write flowchart proofs to prove geometric relationships and paragraph proofs to prove geometric relationships. All right, continuing to use our inductive reasoning skills to make some observations and prove geometric relationships. Just a refresh, there are three types of proofs. We're going to get more in-depth understanding of our flowchart proof and our paragraph proof. All right, next, let's get familiar with some theorems that we'll need for our proofs. First, we'll start with our right angles congruence theorem, which states all right angles are congruent. So to shorten that to an implied, we can say right angles implies congruent angles. All right, next we have our congruent supplements theorem. It states, if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, or to congruent angles, then they are congruent. So let's take a look at this diagram to get a better understanding of this theorem. If angle one and angle two are supplementary, so angle one and angle two are supplementary, and angle three and angle two are supplementary, so that's this angle and this angle are supplementary, then we conclude that angle one is congruent to angle three. And that's because these two angles, one and three, are supplementary to the same angle. So they must be congruent. So here's our shortened implied statement. Two angles supplementary to the same angles or congruent angles implies congruent angles. Similarly, we have our congruent complements theorem. And it states if two angles are complementary to the same angle, or to congruent angles, then they are congruent. So here we have in our diagram, if angle four and angle five are complementary, so here's angle four and angle five are complementary, in other words, they add up to be 90 degrees, and angle six and angle five are complementary, so six and five add up to be 90 degrees, then we conclude that angle four is congruent to angle six, and that's because angle four and six are complementary to the same angle. So here's our implied statement. Take a moment to write down your implied statements as you watch and listen to the video. Next, we have our vertical angles congruence theorem, and it states vertical angles are congruent. We've actually talked about this already, so we're seeing this again as a formal theorem. So here we have vertical angles implies congruent angles. So angle two is congruent to angle four because they are vertical angles. Angle one and angle three are congruent because they are vertical angles. These are conclusions we can make by looking at a diagram. We don't have to be told vertical angles. We can conclude just looking at a picture about vertical angles. All right, and then our single postulate for this lesson will be the linear pair postulate. It states if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So here in our diagram, we have angle one and angle two form a linear pair. So angle one and angle two are supplementary. That means then we can also say that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. We've actually practiced this, this idea in unit one. So here we are seeing it as a formal postulate in unit two. So our implied linear pair implies supplementary. This is also a postulate that we can use just looking at a diagram. So we don't have to be given linear pairs. We can conclude linear pairs just by looking at a diagram. All right, so in this lesson, we kind of want to get more familiar with our other two types of proofs. So we have a few examples where we're going to practice going from one style of proof to a different style of proof. Again, our objective is just to learn the structure of our proofs while also realizing how to prove. All right, so here we have proving that right, the right angles congruence theorem. Use the given flowchart proof to write a two-column proof of the right angles congruence theorem. So we're given that angle one and angle two are right angles. Here's our diagram. We want to prove, in other words, our goal is to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. So we want to prove that these two angles are congruent. We know that they're both right, but we, we want to prove that they're congruent. Well, here's our given flowchart proof, and just to get familiar with the flowchart, it's just a bunch of bubbles with some arrows pointing from one statement to the next. So you read it like if-then statements. So my first statement, which is given, is 
if angle one and angle two are right angles, reason given, then I can conclude that measure of angle one equals 90 degrees, measure of angle two equals 90 degrees as well. And our reason is that right angles implies the measure of the angle equal to 90 degrees. Now, based on this statement, I now can conclude that the measure of angle one equals measure of angle two. So the way that I read this is I can say, if measure of angle one equals 90 degrees, and measure of angle two equals 90 degrees, then measure of angle one equals measure of angle two. And the reason I can conclude this statement is the transitive property of equality. Okay, now I'm saying if measure of angle one equals measure of angle two, then angle one is congruent to angle two. And the reason I can say that is because equal measured angles implies congruent angles. So think of these as if-then statements, and then one conclusion helps support the hypothesis of the next piece to then get your next conclusion. So like treat this as a hypothesis conclusion. Now this is a hypothesis conclusion. Now this is a hypothesis conclusion. It just kind of flows. Hypothesis conclusion, hypothesis conclusion, hypothesis conclusion. And then you're just supporting with reasons why you can make the various conclusions. All right, so let's fill in the flow chart, uh, take the flow chart information, all the statements and reasons, and fill in the two column proof. So we always start with the given, just like we would in a flow chart, that's true in the two column as well. And our next arrow points to the measure of angle one equals 90 degrees. So our next statement conclusion is measure of angle one equals 90 and measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. And the reason is that right angles implies measure of the angle equals 90 degrees. And we're pointing to our next statement, which is the measure of angle one equals measure of angle two by the transitive property of equality. And our final conclusion, which is our goal, is that angle one is congruent to angle two. And we had all of this support from step one, statement one, until we got to statement four. Okay, now with this example, let's take a look at going from a two column proof to a flowchart proof. And our example that we're gonna use is that we're given angle one and angle two are supplementary, angle three and angle two are supplementary. So we have two given statements. Our goal is to prove angle one is congruent to angle three. So take a look at your diagram, make any necessary markings to help you with the plan. So we know that we're given these two statements. So as we convert to a flowchart proof, we need both of our bubbles. And each given statement has its own bubble. And I say bubble because there's no other great word to say, but basically you're just kind of boxing in your statements and reasons. So our givens should be the very first easy parts of the proof. Now we want arrows as well pointing from one statement to the next. So the way you read this is if angle one and angle two are supplementary, then what kind of conclusion can I make? Well, I can make the conclusion that if I add the two angles together, it's gonna equal 180 degrees. And my reason is that supplementary angles implies two angles with sum equal to 180 degrees. And that's gonna be true for both of my givens. Measure angle three plus measure angle two equals 180 degrees. Next, I can conclude then, since they're both equal to the same degrees, then that means that the two pairs are equal to each other. And that's by the transitive property of equality that I can make that conclusion. And then next, I can say that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three, because I can see measure of angle two is the same angle added on both sides. So I'm gonna subtract that angle from both sides. And then resulting in angle one congruent to angle three, and that's because equal measured angles is always gonna imply congruent angles. All right, so again, just practicing going from one form or style of proof to another, just getting familiar with the style, in addition to learning how to prove logically from a given statement to a goal statement. All right, for our next example, we wanna go from a paragraph proof to a two-column proof. So here's a paragraph proof. It's just 
you know, you're just putting together sentences. Again, always start with the given. So with a paragraph, then you're writing out sentences, complete sentences, and explaining from one statement to the next logically towards the goal of whatever you're trying to prove. So you always start with the given and work towards what you're trying to prove. So we're starting off by saying that angle 5 and angle 7 are vertical angles formed by intersecting lines. So as shown in the diagram, angle 5 and angle 6 are linear pair. Again, linear pair is something you can conclude just looking at a diagram. So your reasoning would be, as shown in the diagram, angle 5 and 6 are a linear pair. And since a linear pair implies supplementary angles, we can conclude that angle 5 and angle 6 are supplementary. We can also conclude that angle 6 and 7 are supplementary. Therefore, two angles supplementary to the same angles implies congruent angles. All right, so let's see what it looks like as a two-column proof. So this is where you just sort of make your statements. Given always goes first. And then what's the next conclusion? That each pair of angles, 5 and 6, 6 and 7, are a linear pair. And that's as shown in the diagram. And since linear pair implies supplementary, that's going to be my next statement. And reason, linear pair implies supplementary. And because we have angle 5 congruent to angle 7, because we have angle 6 supplementary to the 5 and 7, then we can conclude that 5 and 7 are congruent by two angles supplementary to the same angles implies congruent angles. All right, for this example, we just want to use the relationship that we know about vertical angles to solve and find for, uh, a value for x. So this isn't a proof per se, but it is a practice of using justifications and our theorems to solve for unknown information. So we're going to set up our equation. We look at two lines that are intersecting. That means we can conclude that angles across from each other are vertical angles. So since angle TPS and QPR are vertical angles, their measures are equal to each other. So then I can substitute 3x plus 1 for the measure of angle QPR and 148 degrees for the measure of angle TPS. And now I'm ready to solve using my algebra skills, getting x by itself, so x equals 49. So the value of x is 49. All right, so this is just a snapshot concept summary of all our types of proofs. And as soon as you get familiar with each type, you'll be free to choose your style and type of proof in order to do proofs in the future. But for now, we're just practicing each type, getting familiar with the style and the structure, in addition to just how we logically prove a given statement towards a proof statement from start to finish. And I know we're feeling pretty overwhelmed right now, so I feel like this is an opportunity for a double face palm, just when one face palm isn't enough. The struggle is real. Bring in clarifying questions, and let's continue using our grit towards figuring out proofs in geometry land. See you in class.